herzlich willkommen, meine Damen und Herren, liebe Freundinnen und Freunde und vor allem liebe Gäste von fern und nah. Wir treffen an diesem Wochenende Künstler und Intellektuelle, die bei aller Verschiedenheit eins gemeinsam haben. Sie trennen nicht zwischen Kunst, Journalismus, Wissenschaft und politischer Intervention. Wir verknüpfen mit diesem Projekt zwei Schauplätze des Widerstands gegen autoritäre Herrschaft, den Kampf um Demokratie im Osten Europas und den arabischen Frühling, man zögert ein bisschen diesen Begriff noch zu verwenden. Wieder die Müdigkeit, der Titel dieses Projekts nimmt die These der Müdigkeitsgesellschaft auf, die der Philosoph Byung Chul Han der in Karlsruhe an der Universität lehrt, dem Westen anheftet. Er bezeichnet damit die Tendenzen von Stagnation und Ermattung, von denen Europa befallen ist, Zukunftspessimismus, Abschottung nach außen, Deindustrialisierung, wachsende öffentliche Verschuldung. Zu diesen Symptomen der Müdigkeit gehört auch, dass die europäische Politik vor allem mit sich selbst beschäftigt ist. Sie erscheint kraftlos und unengagiert gegenüber den Umbrüchen in unserer unmittelbaren Nachbarschaft. The message on the wall is often the only method for freedom of speech. So graffiti has a very long history in, in the Arab world. Um, also political graffiti, of course, uh, the Palestinian conflict. Um, they use graffiti since the very beginning uh, to express their views. Uh, it really basically started in Tunisia where, where they started to paint on everything. Uh, it was really amazing to see. There was, uh, they took over the public space and the uh, public walls. Uh, the same happened in Libya, where because it, uh, it went much more violent than in Tunisia, um, also some of these artists were killed. And all these artists, they connected uh, together. For the first time, if I understand you properly, um, there is something like art and art form that develops its own voice, that develops a truly Egyptian voice. There's a tendency for, for curators and the general po political aspect of curatorial practices um, it, from Europe and the West in general is to pick and choose certain kinds of art that kind of satisfies this loop of oppression. I was talking about the Iranian revolution because uh, specifically I think uh, Iranian artists um, are very creative but many of them have fallen into this trap of producing art that satisfies the West. They like to see a black woman in a chador. A lot of women who live in Iran actually don't mind wearing the chador and they don't consider this the oppression. So the art in Egypt, especially the street art, is direct, it's raw and it's, 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 it has a purpose and it has a goal. The graffiti in this situation, it's not, a, not only art, it's a news because we, we really fat up from our newspaper and our media and, uh, and we wanted to, to put this, yeah. They are so we see the connection to the news here, yes. Like this and uh, we, we just use the wall by this way to make like a big newspaper to, to give them um, not to advise them, but we, we, we tell the other we are wake up and we understand your, your dirty plan. When he paints in Mohammed Mahmoud, uh, this is the street leading from Tahir Square to the Ministry of the Interior, 
Um, it doesn't mean like he comes there and paints in the afternoon after the fight was over. He, he painted that during the riots. What he was trying to do and what other artists were trying to do is say, tell the truth on the walls. I mean, the army knows that women are not afraid anymore and they're going to go out on the street and protest. And they're using this uh, oppression of specifically targeting women um, to make them afraid and not go and protest. We just fight about Egyptian personality. That's what we look at it. And, uh, and they want to, to change our face and give us another personality and another face. And, and the, the fight, it's like this. What's happening in Egypt by the, the ex-regime is that they, it's in their best interest to separate Islam from uh, Christianity. But this is what Mubarak tried to do and he was telling um, the West that he's protecting the Copts from you know, the Muslims and etc. Separation. Separ separating and, and making us feel like we are Muslims and they are Copts. Whereas we've already, always lived in peace and harmony and we don't have these labels. <laughs> Graphic novels and breakbeats as chambers of resonance. You had told uh, the young people in Egypt that there is a door in their prison, you just have to break through it. I don't want to be an illustrator, I don't want to be an artist. I want to tell stories, and when I found these, they were like, okay, that's the window that opens all the frontiers. Uh, that's the window that opens to get you out from frustration. So the goal is not to tell people what to think, which would be, the other word for that is propaganda. There's um, a process of infantilization. Uh, which is not just specific to what was happening in Tunisia, but I think to a lot of Arabic countries, but not, also, not only Arab countries, other parts of the world, where basically you treat a citizen as somebody who, who doesn't know what's best for him, and so you talk to him as you were like your fa his father telling, or his parents, his father or mother telling him what is good for him, and that basically you know best anyway. I think w one summarizing word would be truth, in the sense that Basically, I think that's the biggest threat to any dictatorship or to any intolerant, ignorant uh, regime is basically truth and truth being spread out that everybody knows about what's happening, so transparency and truth. And that's the threat because you don't need to ask for permission from anyone to go create a band that's going to do music or um, if you want to um, self-publish your work, be it music or be it uh, artwork or cartoons or whatever, then you can just go ahead and do it. We think that it's going to be more spread because, because it is not from a, a governmental establishment and not from a sponsor that wants to make a play, let us do something about the revolution now or these things. No, it's about the frank words that comes from the people to, to their... I think they're already taken extremely seriously because they're trying to be banned, they're trying to be shut down um, and that's a fear, that's a fear factor for the power. And I think the fact that they're doing this work in a, in a free manner or in a manner that will outsource the availability in the country, especially with the word of mouth, which is a huge power tool in our country, in Egypt.